The finance world is notoriously opaque, which makes it intimidating for us mere mortals. Plus, there is a whole world of misconceptions about how investing actually works. The downside to the scenario is that if you don't have good information, you can't make good decisions. This video is my little act of service because I want to break down some of these barriers and show you some of the myths that are floating around, bust them so that you can make an informed decision about whether investing is something that you want to experiment with or not. But first, let's take a little sneak peek at why we're even bothering to talk about investing. According to the website NerdWallet, average returns on the stock market are about 10% a year. So even if you adjust that for inflation, nine times out of 10, money in the stock market is still going to do better than money sitting in your savings account. Plus compounding, as the value of your portfolio grows, you earn even more money and the jump that you have on your savings account just increases. Right, at the end of this video, you might decide that investing is not for you. But my hope is that none of the ideas that I mentioned in this video are the reason that you don't invest. Let's get started. Myth number one, you need a lot of money to invest. So the cool thing with technology is that there is now a whole world called financial technology, which has made investing in the stock market not only easier, but cheaper for you and me, the non millionaires in the world to get access. That's because firstly, the old gatekeepers, so those are the old white guys in suits who will only talk to you if you have hundreds of thousands in the bank to invest. Those guys are a lot less relevant now, thanks to finance apps and online platforms that connect you directly to the stock market. The other thing that's really helped here is the rise of funds. This is where a bunch of individual people pool their money together and a fund manager or quite often a a robot or algorithm uses that pooled cash to buy individual stocks. So you as an individual are not buying individual stocks. So these two factors both make it much easier to access the stock market with less money. Myth number two, you need loads of specialist knowledge to invest in the stock market. Nope, you need some knowledge and a good basis of research and information is super important. You need to understand concepts like compounding, diversification, what the different asset classes are, stocks, bonds, funds, but you do not need to have the whole finance world figured out. Because as you'll hear experts talk about all the time, what's way more important than super detailed knowledge and a complex portfolio is to be rational in your decisions, making good decisions based on the information that you have and staying consistent with it. The other thing to mention here is robo investors. If this feels comfortable for you, they're quite a cool thing. When you sign up for an app or an online platform, they have ready made funds based on your risk appetite and they will ask you a bunch of questions before they take your money to ascertain what your risk appetite actually is. So as long as you know about funds and what's in the individual fund and the outlook for that fund, you don't need to have loads of specialist knowledge on individual companies. Next up, myth number three, it's time consuming to manage an investment portfolio. This is one that got me for ages and it's related to the previous point because I thought that in order to start, I needed to know everything about the stock market and the financial industry. And that felt like an impossible task. So for a long time, I just didn't get started. I thought having a portfolio meant that I would be reading economic news, catching up on individual financial statements for companies, figuring out where to find financial statements for companies. Exhausting, right? Luckily, what I learned from the research that I advise you do too, is that there is so much of your portfolio setup that can be automated. Right now, for example, I have money that goes straight from my current account into my investment account and then straight into the investments that I've chosen. I don't have to do anything. A related side note here, experts will say that the best strategy when it comes to investing is the one that you can stick to. That means putting your money in, leaving it there for 5, 10, 20 years is going to see reliable returns. On the flip side, if you are constantly going in and adjusting your portfolio, particularly if you don't know what you're doing, that's actually going to be detrimental. So again, hands off is good. Having said that though, I can't emphasize enough how 
important it is that you do do research upfront. You need to have some idea of what you're doing with your money. And granted, that part can take a little time, but it's an upfront investment. And once you have the basics in place, the maintenance of your portfolio should be pretty simple. And we have now reached the fourth and final myth that I'm talking about in this video. Investing is gambling with your money. The first thing I'm going to say here is that gambling, by definition, is a game of chance. It is entirely reliant on luck and you have very little control over the outcomes. And there is no doubt that there is a part of investing that does involve luck, but there is also a whole bunch of data. No matter how far you go back in the history of the stock market, you will find that on balance, the graph is going up and to the right, which means that the value of the stock market is growing. And yes, there are years when the stock market drops, years, months, individual days. And yeah, you would be really unlucky if you have to withdraw cash in the middle of a terrible year for the stock market. But on balance with the trend of the stock market, the probability of you doing well is favorable. Now, making a decision based on this favorable data doesn't sound like gambling to me. But don't get me wrong, you can certainly gamble on the stock market. If you are going to go out there and buy individual stocks without having any experience of investing and no idea about those individual companies, particularly if you're going to put all of your money into a very small range, then yeah, that is 100% gambling. But that is not the only way to invest in the stock market. For me, doing research and making a rational decision based on the information I have, that feels like a pretty solid way to handle my finances. So there you have just four of the many investment myths that are out there. I hope that if any of those were holding you back, they are no longer and you feel a little bit more inspired and empowered to research a little bit more about investing and find out whether it could be for you. As ever, thank you so much for watching this video and I hope to see you in the next one.